Peter Bailey with the Prouty Project. I'm a senior vice president here in the Organizational Development Practice Group. And what we've been doing for the last oh, number of years has been combining experiential learning with corporate leadership development. And that can be at the strategic planning level, that can be at the team development level, and that also can be at the board development level. Uh, I've also been in the field for about 25 years doing leadership development. Uh, started way back in New York City doing youth leadership and uh, got involved in teacher training and then principals and superintendents and later on years into corporate leadership development. I have a master's degree in experiential ed and I'm on the board of directors for Our Bound both at the local and national level. So explain to us what is experiential learning? Experiential learning, you know, that can be anything from uh, servant learning, service learning, where you're actually doing service and providing uh, some type of uh, application for people working together to solve a problem. I like to think of experiential learning being the maturation of choice. It's really helping people have better choices from which to choose from. So if you think about um, any activity, there's always a reason you want to do an activity, so you're not just doing a problem-solving game. I call them new games. We're doing them for a reason. We're doing them for the team to come together, for team development. We're doing them for an opportunity for a, a senior manager to get to know their staff better, or an opportunity for a group to uh, see themselves interacting in a way and begin to refine their ground rules or their behavioral operating principles so that they're doing their real work in a different way. So I'm the owner of a company, and I like this idea of experiential learning. How might I apply it? What kind of instruments would you use with my team? Oh, that's a great idea. Um, to serve as um, that type of an example, I'd probably want to know a little bit more about your outcomes and the objectives. Uh, and you know, in some ways, there's a number of different activities you can do, and you can process them differently. For example, a ropes course is a really wonderful tool for the right group at the right time and you want to make sure that you're applying the right principles for using that ropes course. So what are you looking for? Are you looking for the team to uh, have a challenge and to support individuals in their challenge and everybody has an opportunity to uh, belay each other in a way that shows mutual support and admiration? Um, are you looking to do a team challenge like a complexity challenge where everybody's working in small groups trying to solve a problem together? So I'd want to ask a, a, a group leader such as yourself in a way um, that would uncover some of your objectives so we can pick the right activity for something like that. So maybe I have five staff members or 25 staff members and I want to maximize how they perform every day. Mm -hmm. Could I use experiential learning for that and how? Absolutely. You know, the thing about experiential learning, and I think it's a philosophy, it's really a way of teaching content around leadership or change management or innovative thinking or team dynamics through a visceral learning process. We can lecture all day and yet you're not going to learn the same way. What about The thing about experiential learning is that it helps people learn at different levels. You know, auditory and uh, physical activity learners are going to want to see something happen. So if we lay a problem out on the floor and you've got to get from point A to point B, the way the team solves that problem will be a great microcosm for how the team's going to solve their own strategic planning or their own marketing launch project. What does a learner get out of experiential learning? Well, that's a great question. What uh, a learner gets out of uh, doing something like this is the opportunity for them to see themselves in, in, a, in a system. And we don't always get that bird's eye view sitting above ourselves, looking at ourselves behaving. So if we were to set up a problem for a group to solve, they then get to debrief afterwards and say, hmm, what was my role? And generally speaking, we find that groups tend to perform in these small simulations exactly as they do in the boardroom or on the factory floor in a way that uh, gives them some observations of themselves. And so we debrief that and we help them recognize what is it that you just contributed or where did you show up in a way that you had an idea and you didn't put it forward or you felt other people sort of talking it over and you didn't get your ideas across. Where does that happen? on your team. So you get a chance to modify and you get a chance to say, you know what, I want to show up differently on my team. Or I knew I had the right idea, why didn't I lead that forward? So um, whether it's a team of five or a team of 25, we can set up problem solving scenarios that would give you the opportunity to see yourself doing that. So these games, do they really translate into team development, problem solving, hardline, business ROI? Mm -hmm. 
Great question. And I think some people think about games and how do they translate into ROI and do they really solve business problems. I think a lot of it goes into the facilitation. It's not just a game. As I said, they're new gains. If I lay out a problem, for example, an acid river, and it's four cement blocks and three boards you have to get with two boards across this, this expanse of the, of the grass lawn or the boardroom floor, and I've got ten people on this side who have to get across in a limited amount of time. It seems like a game, but look at what has to go on here. You've got planning. You've got resource allocation. You've got figuring out who of your team members can lift the boards, think through the design, and then think through the end point on how do we get the last person across. All of that brings in the strategic planning that any team is going to need to use. And when we debrief it later on, you get a chance to say, we needed to do that differently. And now, in a sense, we're sort of practicing strategic planning. We're practicing our team development so that we can make some observations about ourselves as a team. Maybe we're coming at it from too narrowly focused a view. Maybe we need to be more expansive in our searching for new possibilities, which often happens for teams where they don't give much time to possibility thinking. You know, they have a very prescribed 20 minutes of brainstorming. Rather than, maybe we need to be more open to, uh, to possibilities, and then we're going to come up with new solutions, rather than the same thing practiced again and again. How does a company know if uh, experiential learning is, is right for them? Great question. You know, sometimes companies don't know whether experiential learning is the right thing for them or not. And what we'd like to do as facilitators is begin to really tailor it for a company. Um, you'll see in our office we have things across the table which are, you know, Cirque du Soleil uh, jester hats and pipe, colorful pipe cleaners and, and uh, various things on the table. And for some groups even that's too much which means we need to tone things down so that those tools would be less evident and our process would be about working in pairs, working as a small team, using flip charts. So experiential learning really should be modified all the time for the level of the learner. And we would build that again with the CEO of the company, whoever is pulling the leadership team together, or if it's working with the training and development team, helping people uh, decide what is the right level of activity for their group and for the objectives they want to accomplish. So is learning a spectator sport? Can you comment on that point? Oh, is learning a spectator sport? I think learning is really about uh, everybody being involved. I like to think that we are, um, we are all crew, not passengers, so that we all need to contribute to the learning. I don't think any of us are working in a vacuum where our work, even as individual contributors, is not making any difference. So I would invite everybody to be involved in every activity. In fact, our activities are designed in such a way that everyone has a role. No matter their physical ability, if they're recovering from an injury, we still need everybody's involvement because they have things to share and, and ways to contribute. Peter, tell us why a company would consider utilizing a professional like you in an off-site location. What value do you get out of that? Great. Uh, utilizing a partnership like the Prouty Project and the Leadership Center at Sugar Lake Lodge, um, many companies are looking for what's the best way to maximize their time with their people um, offline. It's really hard to get people out of the office and they really want to maximize that. And I think what's ideal about a retreat or an offsite up at Sugar Lake Lodge is that you're going to be able to weave in both leadership content and the experience of being away from the city. I think. Uh, too many times people say they actually underplay the value of stepping back. You know, a retreat is a retreat, and it's designed to pull you back from the, the melee of a regular day and the, and the confusion and allow you to say, hmm, how are things going? Are things going the way we want them to go? What do we need to do to retune or refine our processes, our strategies, our systems? So if we can take some time, not just uh, lecture, but really integrating leadership content around change management, around innovative thinking, around new systems and processes, around leadership dynamics, and then give them an opportunity to practice those. We've got a number of activities that are challenges for teams or for individuals up there at the Leadership Center that would give them a chance to practice some of the leadership concepts and then go back into the laboratory of the classroom and say, hmm, how did that go? Now moving forward, what do we do? The ropes course, for example. Here's an opportunity for us to talk about it ahead of time, go through where people are supportive in their own uh, dynamics within the office, and then go do a physical challenge and an emotional challenge like, like a ropes course. And I'll talk a minute about what, that, what a ropes course means. These are um, tall telephone poles with belay systems which are designed to keep people safe all the time. So there's never a risk 
or a danger inherent in a ropes course. What are protecting you are your own team members. And so your, your systems of support are there, much like in the office or much like in a work environment. So it's got some really wonderful metaphors for how you support people, how you give people rope so that they need to have what they need to climb high. And you're also there to protect them so that if anything happens, you're there to catch their fall, if you will. Um, so a ropes course is an individual challenge, but it's also a team challenge. It gives a group a chance to see themselves under positions of stress where it's more perceived risk. Again, you're not leaping expanses of across a chasm. You're actually protected at all times. But you are high up off the ground, and you are reaching for uh, an aspiration like the, the rope that you're jumping for. And then you've got the support of your team. And so these are the kinds of activities that are really wonderful for the metaphoric work of leadership. And it also supports the concept that you can lead anywhere in an organization. That it doesn't have to be the top of the pyramid is the only leader. When you have a ropes course or any of the challenge activities that we would set up, we really do invite leadership to come up from all over the group. And people have opportunities to respond that way. So Peter, if I'm a president of a company and I've got some specific challenges that I've already identified. I need to come up with a new product idea. Uh, my team is new, I need to develop them. Could a ropes course or something like that be woven into the, the process you'd bring me through and what benefit would I get out of that? You know, it's a great question. A lot of people ask us, how do we um, weave in a ropes course or physical challenge activities to the process of solving a business problem or onboarding new staff? And I think they're ideal situations because when you think about it, if you bring new staff on board, it's going to take you six months to a year to really figure out who are those people. How do they contribute? What are their behaviors? What is their performance level going to be? But when you actually invite those people to perform as a team for two to three hours or a half day or a full day activity, you're going to know beyond a shadow of a doubt who you have, what their energy level is, what's their possibility thinking level. Um, how do they command? How do they follow directions? How do they work as a team? Uh, it's really a microcosm for, for learning about your, your own people and having them see themselves and then sort of fine tune that and say, this is great. We, we needed this, but we need more of that um, when you're doing something like that. If you're developing a new product, setting up an activity around a ropes course or a, a challenge activity gives you a chance to look at possibility. How often do we run out of the door trying to set up a new product without really considering all the variables. So this is a great example of, hmm, we ran off too quickly, we actually came up with some narrow solutions. Maybe if we step back and look at our resources more, look at the contributors more, think of out-of-the-box ideas. And we have a program we call Innovative Intersections, which really gets people thinking way out of the box, so that when they do that divergent and then conversion thinking, they're better prepared when they do their own problem solving or their own um, ideation within the company focusing on their products or services. Uh, Peter, are physical challenges the only way to do experiential learning or are there some non-physical things we could do in an off-site location? Great question. Some people think, is it only a ropes course that you can do that's a physical challenge to learn? Um, experiential learning, again, is a, anything with the level of the learner. So we can do uh, things that a kitchen table, at a boardroom table, in a, indoors, outdoors, that are not just physical, but they're really mental, problem solving, creative thinking processes that expand, as I mentioned, sort of that divergent thinking to then converge later on. Uh, we like to mix it up so that people don't feel like they have to be a, a triathlete to do any of these activities, but really, anybody can perform them. They are designed to include everybody, every physical ability level. And it does invite the creativity, it invites the, the team dynamics, so that can be some social stress too, just having to work in a new team of four people to solve a problem, whether it's map and compass, uh, a sort of a very complex orienteering challenge, um, breaking the, the codes that we put into some of our problem solving. It's going to require some good computer work. People who are really good at that succeed differently than others who might want to do the ropes or the, the mountain biking. So there's a challenge to both and it's important that we have all aspects of those and some of the problems that we ask people to do. Uh, finally, tell us about what you like about working with teams at the Leadership Center at Sugar Lake Lodge. You know, working with the Leadership Center at Sugar Lake Lodge, uh, it's a great opportunity. It's a beautiful resort. It's right there in this beautiful Sugar Lake. You've got the Northwoods feel, and you've got the sort of backdrop of a golf course and open space, and you've got sort of the challenge of, of getting something accomplished between the day you arrive and the day you leave. 
that in itself gives you some of that ratcheted up pressure of we got to get there, we got to fix this, we got to solve this problem. And we've got some great facilitators to help you do that. We work with you as leaders of, a, of your company to really craft what's the best amount of fun and challenge and leadership content to maximize your time there at the Leadership Center.